Hello, good afternoon, guys. Welcome to MK Convenience Brokerage. My name is Mohammed. In this video, we're going to go over section 4 with the transportation passenger safely. Now, I was supposed to go over the general knowledge that was about 60 pages. Um, what I'm going to do, I'm going to keep that video for, ne for the ne next time. Um, go through my uh, channel. Obviously, I will have different parts of the videos. I wanted to go over the smaller videos first. Which means this one, the hazmat, because there were six or seven pages. Um, the bigger video, I'm gonna try to leave that for last because it's a lot. It's gonna be a lot of a lot of topics. So I want to go over the smaller topics for those people that only, only want to go over cover this. Um, that's what the reason why I skipped it. I promised I was gonna go over by um, what you call um, you know going over by like general knowledge, air brakes, and everything. But unfortunately, that's so many pages. I'm gonna leave that to last because I could spend more time explaining to you because it's gonna be like an hour, two, three hour video on that part. But with these parts, at least the smaller parts, I'll be able to finish more quickly. And whoever needs help with these smaller parts will be able to do what they have to do in order to take the written exam. Now, section four is the transporta tra transporting passenger safely. Now, this section covers when the passenger endorsement is required, vehicle inspections, loading and trip start, on the road, after trip vehicle inspections, prohibited practices, and use of brake door inter interlocks. Now, um, this is only for people that are designing to transport 15 or more passengers, uh, ex not counting the driver, obviously. So keep that in mind. This is the P endorsement on your license. Uh, this is defined by the bus article 19-A of the New York State Traffic Law, um, with the gross vehicle rate exceeding more than 26,000 pounds, which is designed to transport passengers or commence. So basically, if you're driving a big school bus, also known as a cheese bus, or if you're driving a, what you call a regular MTA bus, the blue one, or anything with a bus, that's what you need this license passenger, because you're, drive, you're, you're transporting passengers. You're not obviously transporting boxes, you're transporting human people from one place to another so you need the passenger endorsement if that's what you guys are planning to do again it has to be more than 26,000 pounds uh, so 26,000 and one pound that might be a test question so I will highly recommend the vehicle rating of, of, of the bus and have to transport more than 15 people 15 or more adults keep that in mind less than 15 then guess what you don't need it you probably don't, uh, you don't, then it's going to have a restriction on it, but always on the safe side, always have a passenger endorsement just in case. It's just a written test. So it's not like you're going to be, uh, you know, like if you get a school bus license, you could get a license for school bus without taking the P endorsement. But guess what? If you have less than, less than pass 15, uh, more than 15 passengers, then you won't be able to drive even the school bus. You need this endorsement to drive having more than 15 passengers because basically that's what the, basically this endorsement is for. Um, again, it will tell you, you do not need a CDL passenger endorsement if you plan to transport only members of your family for non-commercial purposes. So guess what, if you have a big, big bus and you're only transporting your family members, you don't need a license. Basically, it's only used for business purposes where you're getting money out of it. To get the passenger endorsement, you must pass a, a, a knowledge test of section 2 and 4 of this manual. Again, uh, you have to take the general knowledge test and the, uh, and the school bus one, obviously because you're driving a bus. And this uh, and the passenger um, vehicle system. You must make sure these things are good working order before driving. Your service brakes, including air hose coupling, if your bus has a trailer or semi trailer. Your parking brakes. Your steering mechanism. Your lights and reflectors are working. Your tires. Front wheel must not have recap or recurve tires. Your horn is working. Your windshield vipers or vipers. You must have a rear vision mirror or mirrors. Coupling devices if they have it. Wheels and rims, make sure they're in working order. Emergency equipment required by law. This is a required by law. A fire extinguisher, emergency reflectors, and spare electrical fuses unless equipped with circuit breakers. So these are the requirements. I would memorize these parts at least because these are emergency equipment. It is required by law and it, is, it might be required by the test as well. You never know. So keep that in mind. These three things will be asked during the test question. The test question might ask is, which one of the following requirement emergency equipment required by law should be present? They might couple talk, uh, three of the four points. They might throw some over here and they part one, one, of the, one of the answers will be over here. So keep that in mind. If you know only these three, you should be good. Access door and panels. As you check the outside of the bus, close any emergency exit. Also, close any open access panels for baggage, restroom service, engines, etc. before driving. Bus. <coughs> oh. Sorry. Bus interiors. Now, people sometimes damage unintended buses. Well, people do that. Always check the interior of the bus before driving to ensure rider safety. 
All the instated walls should always be clear. The following parts of the bus must be in safe working condition. You each handles and railing for people that come up the bus. Floor covering should be okay. Signal devices, including the restroom emergency buzzer, if the bus has a restroom. Again, not every bus has a restroom. You know how the big buses that we all, we all went to high school trips that has a bathroom at the end of the bus? Well, that's what they're talking about. Emergency exit handles. Um, they should be in the bus. The seal must be safe for riders. The seats, I should say, must be safe for riders. All seats must be securely fastened to the bus. Never drive with an open emergency exit door or window. The emergency exit sign on an emergency door must be clearly visible. If there is a red red emergency door light, it must work. Turn it on at night or any other time. You must uh, you, your outside light. Must your outside light. And the roof hatches. Some of the bus has roof hatches. You must lock some emergency roof hatches in a partly open position for fresh air. You may lock. The question is, you may lock. You don't have to. For fresh air, yes. Do not leave them open as a regular practice. Keep in mind the bus higher chance. Keep the keep in mind the buses higher clearance while driving with them with them open. So they what they do is they keep like they make a four or five inch gap a little bit higher than the bus because you know you're pushing it up. So what it does is basically it might create. Um, you know, for clearance purposes, when the bus is going under the bridge or something, they might hit it. So that's what they're basically saying over there. Use your seatbelt. The driver's seat should have a seatbelt. Always use it for safety. You know what, guys? Uh, seatbelts save lives. That is a lot of, a lot of, uh, you know, people might state it. It is true. It does save lives. Especially if you're driving a big bus, it's definitely going to sa uh, save your lives. There's actually videos on YouTube that actually save one of the bus drivers' uh, life by wearing a seatbelt. And there is a video out there as well where the driver wasn't just wearing a seatbelt. And when the bus rolled over, guess what happened? The driver was sucked out of the air and was sent outside because he wasn't wearing a seatbelt. So seatbelt can save your life if, if used properly. What it means is properly wearing it. Not above your shoulder, not below. Some people wear it just to show you know they have a belt on. So that's what they mean. Do not allow riders to leave carry-on baggage in a doorway or aisle. Common sense. Why? Because people could trip. There should be nothing on the aisle that might trip other riders. Secure baggage and fright in ways that avoid damages. And allow the driver to move freely and easily. Allow riders to exit by any windows or door in an emergency. And protect riders from injury if carry-on fall or shift. Keep this in mind, guys. Certain things might keep uh, one, of, one of what you call, uh, you know, anything outside... On, on the way people are walking back and forth, you don't want to obstruct anything with people so that they don't want to come in and they want to hit the baggage or something like that to fall on the ground. You don't want that. Keep that in mind. If if there is a place where you could put it somewhere else, that might help. Hazardous material. Again, hazardous material is a little bit different. You know, uh, you know, all this over here are all parts of hazardous material class. Uh, one is explosives, ga gases, flammable combustion. Uh, oxidizer, poisons, radioactive, corrosive, miscellaneous hazard material, uh, and ORM, other regular domestic material, whatever this thing is. I have no clue what it is. Oh, oh, hairspray or charcoal. Well, these are what it is. These are all hazardous material, so keep that in mind. Um, the Federal Hazardous Material Table shows which materials are hazardous. Uh, 4.1. They pose a risk to health, safety, and property during transportation. The rules require shippers to mark containers of hazardous material with the, with the material's name, Identification number and hazard hazard label. There are nine different four four uh, four inch diamond shaped hazardous label. Um, obviously showing in this chart. Watch for the diamond shaped labels. Do not transport any hazardous material unless you are sure that rules allow it. So what this is is basically you could um, I I would thought that you would need a hazardous material license for this. To be honest with you, I think you do, but I don't know why they're talking about it in this chapter, but. Let's go over the flow. So basically, if you guys going to, uh, let's say for example, um, you know, transport a hazardous material um, uh, items from somewhere, well, like from one place to another, these are all the classes over here. So as, as if you ever seen a car in New York State with a, should I say, commercial vehicle that has a diamond shaped place car and with a yellow marking on it, they might say number four, number five, or they'll say gases or whatever or the number on the side. Well, that's what it is. That's where they're telling you what they have. A lot of people will be usually doing the gases most often that I've seen. Flammable solids also I've seen. I've never seen this one. I have never seen this one, obviously. I've seen certain ones on the road, but not every one of them, obviously. Because every every one of them is a, a different place what they're doing. So keep that in mind. These are forbidden hazardous material. Buses may carry small arms ammunition labeled ORMD. 
emergency hospital supplies and drugs. You can carry small amounts of some other hazardous material. If the shipper cannot send them in any other way, buses must never carry. You can never carry one of these. Uh, poison gas, liquid class 6, poison tear gas, irritation material, more than 100 pounds of solid class 6 explosives. Um, explosives in the space occupied by people except small arms ammunition. Labeled radioactive material in the space preoccupied by people. More, more than 500 pounds in total of allowed hazardous material and or more than 100 pounds of any other class. R riders sometimes board a bus with that, uh, unlabeled hazardous material. Do not allow riders to carry or on uncommon uh, uh, common hazards such as car barriers or gloves. Standy line. No rider may stand forward on the rear of the driver's seat. Buses designed to allow standing must have a two-inch line on the floor or some other means of showing riders. Where they cannot stand, this is called the standy line. All standing riders must stay behind it. Well, you all see in some of the MTA buses, you can see like a line. It's like a, basically a line where, uh, you know, pass it, you're going to make it dangerous. At your destination, when arriving, the destination or intermediate stop announces location, Reasons for stopping, next departure time, bus number. Do school bus, meaning the, 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 the school bus, do they do it? No. MT bus does it? Yes. So basically, as you can see, it's abroad. So whatever one applies to you, obviously you do it. Test purposes, you need to know every one of them. Um, passenger supervision. Uh, many charter and intercity carriers have passengers comfort and safety rules. Mention rules about smoking, drinking, or use of radio and type patch in the, t in the start of the trip. Um, explain this you explain the rules above will really actually to be honest with you help your li life a little bit easier At stops riders can stumble when getting on and off when the bus starts starts or stops Caution riders to watch their step when leaving the bus MTA buses automatically stated on on the thing regular charter bus and school bus They don't so you have to tell them verbally <laughs> Common accidents the most common bus accident is bus accidents often happen at intersections Use caution even if uh, even if a signal or stop sign controls other traffic. School and mass transit buses sometimes scrape off mirrors or hit passengers' vehicle when pulling out, out from a bus stop. Remember the clearance your bus needs and watch for poles and, and tree limbs at stops. Um, what well, a lot of times what happen is uh, people are very careless when they when they come to intersections and on on speed on, on curves as well. Um, Keep that in mind, guys. A red light stop sign. Even though you think you have the right of way, I will always stop and and go safely. Um, speed curves is also one of the things. Uh, obviously, crashes on curves kill most people and destroy buses because buses are bigger. When they're making a curve on a slippery road or making a curve a little bit fast, your bus is not the same as a car. You have a higher chance of tilting the bus. So keep this in mind. If you're gonna be, uh, if you guys speed on a curve a little bit more, you have a high uh, chances of losing your track on on the ground and able to reduce, uh, you know, make the bus flip over. So I will I highly recommend if you are going to be making a left or right on a curve, certain curve, I would make sure I will go slowly. Stop your bus on railroad crossing 15 and 50 feet before railroad crossing. I would recommend that you ask this question on the railroad crossing. They will always ask a railroad crossing questions. We don't see in New York City. I have never seen in uh, in New York State to be honest with you. Very very rare. I've seen in New Jersey, but uh, but it's always good to know that if you are in a railroad crossing, it's 15 and 50 feet before railroad crossing. Uh, listen and look in both directions. Uh, you should open your forward door if if, if improves your liability to see and hear an approaching train. Roll down your window actually. That will help you hear the rain rather than listening to to music. You know because you want to pay attention. Uh, before crossing uh, after a train has passed, make sure there isn't another train coming in the other direction or the track. So if you know the train is coming on the left and you just turn on speed it and you forgot to look at the right and there's another train that's like five seconds away from hitting you, you just made a big, big costly mistake. You just risked your life of yours and other people in the bus. If your bus has a manual transmission, never change gears while crossing the tracks. I don't know what, what it is about railroad tracks, but most of the cars end up dying at the track. I have no clue why it happens. You've seen that in the movies. But for some odd reason, your car just jams up at the track. And you're starting that, starting that thing, and it's not starting. It's like not even listening to you. I'm like, oh my god, how I did I get to it? Don't change gears. When you're at the track, just keep whatever gear you're on, even if gear number one. If you're able to pass the track, pass the track, then you can do it. Once you change gears, like you change it, guess what? Your car just stops right on the track. It's like telling you, baby, just make me stop right over here. And just stop, and that's it. You guys are gone. Whoever's on the bus, you go, and bus, obviously, you're going to have a higher impact with the train. So keep that in mind. Do not stop at the track. Do not change gears. Just keep on going. 
Um, obviously, you don't have to go to a complete stop for this track. Just, you know, slow down a little bit. You know, if you guys are cautious, you've seen the, 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 the railroad uh, guards are up. Look both left and right. Even if you have it right away, always look left and right and then go. Proceed. You know, it's a best practice. You don't need to stop, but must slow down and carefully check for other vehicles. Uh, a street car crossing where a police or flagman is directing traffic. A, if a traffic signal is green, a crossing marked as exempt or abandoned. Drawbridges are one more important thing. That you'll see a lot in New York City. Uh, stop at a drawbridge. Do not have a signal light or traffic control attendant. Stop at least 50 feet before the draw of the bridge. Again, this is 50 feet for drawbridges. Uh, a railroad crosses between 15 and 50 feet. Keep that in mind, okay? Um, look, make, sh make sure the draw uh, uh, bridge is completely closed. Or, you know, if you did see it, the thing is rising, make sure it is. The traffic light is showing green. When the drawbridge... You know, like, you'll have lights and everything. Make sure the traffic light shows green. And make sure if there is a bridge attendant, which sometimes they do have that, just go over whatever they say. After trip inspections, uh, uh, after trip vehicle inspection, obviously you should always inspect your trip after every, uh, every uh, you know, every shift that you do. People do it? Heck no. But should you do it by this guide? Yes, you should. Um, you always inspect your vehicle. Um, you know, interstate carry, you must complete a written inspection report for each bus driven. Some people, some guess what, some companies might make you do it. Some companies might not make you do it. If you drive for a school bus in New York City, you might, might not do it. Because every school bus company has its own rules and regulation. But if you drive, uh, uh, you know, say if you're working with um, with an MTA bus, you might do it. You never know. Or you might not do it. I don't think so MTA bus drivers do it, to be honest with you. But you know what, guess what, every company has its own rules and regulations. So what one company might do, the other company might not do. So follow whichever company it is. But according to the DMV, you should do an inspection every every bus. Um, obviously, you make sure there's no defect. Uh, make sure there's uh, no safety uh, safety uh, reasons for you to make a, a note on your inspection list, wherever it is. Riders sometimes damage the bus. Uh, you know, like they break the car handle holders, they stab the seats, they you know they, they they mess around with emergency exit windows for some odd reason, whatever it is. Uh, from the you know at the end of the shit, just make sure everything is good working order. And if it's not, obviously let them know. Uh, Prohibitive practices: avoid fueling your bus with riders on board unless absolutely necessary. This is very important. I would highlight this test question: never refuel in a closed building with riders on board. Don't talk with riders or engage in any other distracting activity while driving. Well, that's that's good. Makes sense. The fuel one is very, very actually true. Guess what? You you fill the bus. I don't want to use any bad words, you know, because you know, I might block me on YouTube. But if you guys are fueling the bus, you know, like, you know, like fueling, fueling the bus and somebody's uh, some idiot comes by and smoking a cigarette and this idiot just flings it at you. And guess what? You have the passengers in the bus. Everyone's going to get roasted, to be honest with you. You don't want to do that. You know, you always fill the bus when there's no passengers. There's no one in the bus. Always fill it up, obviously. That's what they're basically talking about. It's safety reasons. Because God forbid something happens, everyone's going to get burned like a charcoal. Because you just fill the gas. You just destroy. You just burn the gas station as well. Keep that in mind. And you just burn the passengers as well. And you also put your life in the alignment as well. Do not tow or push a disabled bus with a rider to board the vehicle. Unless getting off would be unsafe. Um, only tow or push the bus to the nearest safe spot to discharge passengers. Follow the employer's guidelines in towing or pushing disabled vehicles. Um, guys, no one's a superman. You guys cannot push a bus. There's no way on earth you'll be able to push a bus. I mean, I've seen videos of people dragging the bus, but they're not human beings. They're ultra human beings. They have, you know, they have mad, like, gorilla strength. You guys are not... Gorillas. We are all human beings, and they are exceptionally because they've worked out, you know, the muscles and everything. They're pushing a bus. That's completely different from them. We're a little bit different on our part. Pushing a bus on a disabled bus in the road does not only get your life on the line, you're putting your life on the line, but also your passengers. So keep that in mind. Never push a bus. Well, even if you, you know, obviously, to be perfectly safe to you, if your vehicle is disabled. Park your vehicle. If it is a safe place to get out, get off the safe with the passengers and leave the bus over there. A lot of times what happens is there's a lot of cars flying by on a highway especially. What they do, they'll smash right behind the bus. And if you're right behind and pushing it, you're done, to be honest with you. But if you have passengers, you're also risking their lives as well. So keep that in mind. Use of brake doors inter interlock. Uh, mass transit coaches must have a brake and accelerator interlock system. Their interlock applies the service brake and holds the throttle in idle position when the rear door is open. The interlock releases when you close the rear door. Do not use the safety features in place of the uh, of the parking brake. 
again, keep that in mind. Um, these are some of the test section, test your knowledge questions. Um, obviously, guys, uh, read through them, answer them, and I'll let you know what the answer is, uh, what it is. For example, what is a sandy line? We learned it. It's a line before, before when, let's say it's like a line you'll see in the MTA bus where you cannot stand ahead of it. You have to stand behind it. Now, how far from a railroad crossing should you stop? Again, we read through it. It's 15 to 50 feet. Draw bridges, it's 50 feet. Keep this in mind. I want you to answer other questions and everything. Answer them, and then I'll let you know what the, what the, what, I'll let you know in the comment section if you get the answer right or not. So with that being said, guys, this was the transporting vehicle safety. This is an easy test. I'm not going to lie to you. It's a very easy test. As you can see, there's not a lot of questions they can ask you from. There's no way. What are they going to ask you? This is some of the questions, they're going to ask you either the drawbridge question, the sandy line question. They're going to ask you questions like if a, if a vehicle gets stopped, are you supposed to change a gear while you're driving, while you, while you're going through a drawbridge? No. So these are some of the questions they want to ask you. So keep that in mind. You want to make sure you answer the question to the best of your knowledge. You want to make sure when you answer this question, you want to answer it uh, uh, as, as open-minded as you can. The questions are very easy, to be honest with you. It's not that hard. The Vernon test is very, very easy in New York State. The, 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 exam, the, the, the driving exam is harder because that's where they test your knowledge and they test everything part of it. Um, with that being said, guys, thank you again, guys, for watching this video. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed it. If you guys have any other questions, comment, concern, please comment, like, subscribe. I'll try my best to help you out as much as possible to clarify any confusion you guys have. Um, thank you again, guys, for watching this video. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed it.